So in this nugget, we'll talk about the many pieces that make up the collaboration environment. There are different solutions and technologies that we can use to provide different services within our network. So in this nugget, we'll dive in and talk about those different solutions. So depending on your business and your scenario, you may see some of these solutions deployed in your environment. And some of us as we advance in our careers and go to a different business, for example, may see different technologies deployed. So let's get started and dive in. So first we'll talk about video conferencing and how today that is a critical part of how we actually communicate. For many years, what was normal is to get a conference room and just have folks sit around this conference room and have a meeting where everyone physically had to be present. Or we might have a scenario where we have a conference phone. Let's say this is our Tampa office. And we also have offices in Chicago, maybe Los Angeles. So these folks here would actually dial into an audio conference bridge and therefore be part of that meeting. And this is how we communicated for a long time. Then it was common to have cameras on our desktops and laptops and even our mobile phones, which at that point allowed us to have video conferencing. And this enhanced our meetings because we were not able to join that meeting and share our video. Then everyone would be able to see their faces along with expressions when someone laughed or smiled or maybe someone seemed really serious. But you can gauge the emotion of the other person by physically looking at them. And then today, it's not quite common during that video conference call that maybe John here wants to share a document. And he can share that document where others in that meeting, no matter where they're located at, can now view that document. So along with sharing documents, you can also have instant messaging during that video conference, allowing folks to further communicate. But at the end of the day, this gives us real-time collaboration for our groups where we didn't have before in our example where some folks were in a physical room somewhere and then we have many folks in a different location doing that meeting through some type of audio bridge. So next we'll talk about Cisco collaboration components and these are the different pieces that make up the collaboration environment and these components give us the connectivity that we need to allow our folks to have that collaboration, their real-time collaboration, regardless of their internal employees or maybe they're customers that you're trying to interface with. But regardless of who they are or where they're located at, everyone can communicate as if they were in the same room. First, we have our infrastructure, and of course, we have our routing and switching. This is the foundation for any type of collaboration, is that we need to route our traffic accordingly so we can have that connectivity that we need. And we also spoke about the importance of quality of service, where we are prioritizing that traffic on the network to ensure that we meet the need of our business and therefore providing those services that they are expecting to use. We also have virtualization. So many of the Cisco applications were run on a UCS server, for example, and these servers were run a hypervisor, one being ESSI, and these servers would then run virtual machines. And one could be CUCM, for example. Another one could be your contact center at refs. Maybe another virtual machine is your voicemail or Cisco UAD connection. But the takeaway here that these applications are virtualized, not running on physical hardware. And when I say that, it used to be that you needed one physical server for CUCM, another physical server for Contact Center Express, another one for Cisco Unity, the connection. And I remember having racks in the data center with many different servers, each server dedicated to one application. So now one UCS server, for example, can run multiple applications and therefore eliminate the need of having a server for each application. You also need security, especially with anything that, that you're attempting to deploy, regardless of its collaboration or not, because we need to protect our data. We need to protect our environment. So we could have security appliances or applications, and they protect the different components of our environment. So part of our infrastructure, we also have our media resources. So we could have voice gateways that have PVDMs, which stands for Packet Voice DSP Module, and they contain these DSPs, which stands for Digital Signal Processor. And these are really onboard chips that allow us to have hardware-based media resources. So what are some examples of media resources? We have our conference bridge. So this is what allows us to have multiple streams combined together so we could have a conference call, especially if these participants may be using different codecs. We also have NTPs or media termination point, and these can provide services like hold, transfer, but they can also help with DTMF. Those are the tones that you 
may hear when you press a digit on your keypad. So MTP could be used for those conversion of DTMF tones in the event that two sides are using different mechanisms for DTMF. We also have transcoders, and they're used to convert one codec, like maybe G729, to G711, for example. The takeaway being that these are hardware-based media resources that are part of our infrastructure when it comes to Cisco collaboration. Next, we have call control, and that's how we set up and turn down and manage the phone calls or calls overall when it comes to voice and video in our environment. So some of the applications in the Cisco portfolio that provide call control is CUCM, Cisco Unified Communications Manager, and you may also see it referred to as UCM, or for those of us that have been around for a while, Call Manager. You also have Cisco Expressways, and Cisco Expressway allows remote workers, for example, to be able to access resources within your network, for example, for voice and video. You also have Call Manager Express, or you may see it as Unified Communications Manager Express. So CUCM will run in a virtual environment, so it's a server, where Call Manager Express or Communications Manager Express runs on a router. Now we also have other applications like I am in presence. We have our voicemail or Cisco UNI connection. And we also have our contact center applications. So we're talking about contact center express or contact center enterprise. So when I'm in presence, we are enabling instant messaging and also presence services. And voicemail is pretty self-explanatory. Then we have our contact center where you may call into a business and hear an IVR, then hit option one for sales. Hit option two for support. So you, you may hear prompts, or maybe you have an option three for delivery, so you can hit that option to hear information about your product is being delivered to your home, or these may route to an agent of some sort, and he or she can pick up the phone call and assist you. So we're really talking about a call center environment when it comes to those products. We also have conferencing, so we have our Cisco WebEx, so that's a cloud-based solution where people can have their they can have their video, they can also share content. And the beauty of this is you can join this from any device, if it's your mobile phone, maybe a tablet, your desktop or laptop. You could connect using an IP phone. Here we have a wide range of devices that we can use to connect to a conference via WebEx. We have a Cisco meeting server. This is on-prem so not in the cloud. And this also provides the same services in regards to audio, video, the communication that we need for conferencing. And finally, we have our endpoints. So we have our phones that we use, our IP phones. These phones are video capable to provide that functionality that we need for a video conference. We have Cisco telepresence. So you may have a room in a building with a table. You may have a big screen here. And you have endpoints that give you that high quality video that allows everyone to partake in that meeting. And we'll see later that they have units that are specially made for these rooms, and some of them give you an immersive experience where it gives everyone the feeling that they're all actually in the same room. So the experience is very lifelike. And we have software clients like Cisco Jabo, for example, that allows us to connect either to our on-premise environment or to Cisco WebEx. So in this nugget, we had a brief overview of the different components within a collaboration environment. And then the next nugget, we'll take a look at some endpoints that you would expect to see out in the field. So with that, I hope it's been informative for you. I'd like to thank you for viewing.